Hello, my name is Jim. Welcome to my channel about books and reading and stuff. In this video, I want to look at all the books I read in 2020. There'll be a quick rundown of each book I read. There won't be a lot of commentary. If you want to know more, you can ask questions in the comments below. You can also like and subscribe if you so wish. The books I read in 2020, I have a notebook where I list each book as I read it. I've had these notebooks for a long time. I can go back to 1990. 1990, I went through a Kafka phase, it seems, and Dick Francis, Alan Silito as well, I see there, Neville Shoot, Tom Sharp. I read more books in 1990 than I have this year. The first book I read was Paper Towns by John Green. It's the first book I've read by John Green and probably the last. I hear from others that John Green's writing is very much the same for each novel, that the characters are quite similar. I was intrigued by this because I have a background in geography, I have a geography degree, and the idea of having places on the map that don't really exist in real life intrigued me. I enjoyed this read, but I've got no intention of reading any more by John Green. The second book I read this year was the worst book I read this year, The Secret of Another Desert by Ia Cagratelli. It's a romance. Romance isn't my thing. I picked it up because this is a Georgian writer. So it's been translated into English. I really didn't like it. The third book I read was Rich Dad Poor Dad. This is a book about personal finance. It's very interesting. Uh, basically it's about you should increase your assets and reduce your liabilities. The fourth book I read, and possibly the best book I read this year, was Our Mutual Friend by Charles Dickens. This was the first book I gave five stars to this year. It's a very complex narrative. It was Dickens' last novel that he completed before he died. Then in February I read American Gods by Neil Gaiman, the first book of Neil Gaiman's I read. The Loss of El Dorado, V.S. Nepal, about the history of Trinidad. Ten Pound Penalty by Dick Francis. In 1991 I went through a lot of Dick Francis books. My first wife was into horses and she had a lot of Dick Francis books and then I read the selected stories of Tolstoy. In 2021, I'd like to attempt Anna Karenina. I did attempt War and Peace this year, but it defeated me. I didn't get more than the first 50 pages. Then I read three poems by Vajab Shavella. Vajab Shavella is a Georgian writer. These were translated by Donald Rayfeld into English. But poetry loses something in translation and I didn't get much out of this. In March, I read Oliver Twist. This is my least favourite Dickens novel that I've read so far. I didn't think Oliver, the central character, was fleshed out enough. He didn't seem like a real boy. He seemed more like a man in a child's costume. It was, yeah, this was one Dickens novel I didn't really click with. Then I read Hard Girls by Marina Cole. David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. This was much better. This was another five-star read. This is Dickens' most autobiographical novel and it has wonderful characters like McCorber, like the like Peggotty, David Copperfield himself, there's Steerforth, there's Uriah Heep. It's, it's a book I'm going to remember till the day I die. It was a great read. Then I read Toys, which was James Patterson and Neil McMahon, which was a science fiction thing, which it wasn't very good. Then I joined the read-along of Odd Women by George Gissing. The read-along was initiated by Katie of Books and Things. Uh, this is my first active collaboration with Booktube, I guess. Before I'd started putting out booktube videos myself, I enjoyed the read-along. It was a good book. It was a proto-feminist novel, but written by a man, and the 
late 19th century George Gissing. It's worth a read. Then I read Emma by Jane Austen. This was Jane Austen July. This was another read along, again initiated by Katie of Books and Things. This is the second book I've read by Jane Austen. I read Pride and Prejudice a few years ago. I liked Emma. It was interesting to have a Victorian protagonist who didn't start poor. She was rich and she had an interesting character arc. At the beginning she's not the nicest of characters but she grows, she develops and I enjoyed Emma. Then I read Public Library and Other Stories by Ali Smith. This was a strange book. I picked this up before the pandemic started. I go to I went to teach somebody in Stamba Hotel and in Stamba Hotel they have lots of books as decorations and one of the books was this one, Public Library and Other Stories by Ali Smith and I just read it before my appointed lesson. In August I read The Moat in God's Eye by Larry Niven and Jerry Pornell. This is a classic of science fiction, it was written in the 70s. Um, and it's very much of its time. The hero has this chiseled jaw and there's just one token female character who, of course, falls in love with the main protagonist. It is it is what it is. It's a first contact story. Then I read Death Train to Boston by Diane Day. Uh, this, I felt, wasn't great because the two central protagonists didn't come together until very near the end of the book. 16th of August I finished A Poisonous Pixie's second book of poetry, the Lockdown Edition. This, on Goodreads I gave this five stars, in my book I gave it four and a half stars. This was a great read and it's very topical. It's about the lockdown not everything is about the lockdown, but there's a lot of poetry and musings about the lockdown. I really enjoyed this. It talks about lots of characters. There's the Jobsworth in Boots who won't sell uh, our writer, Rachel, the shampoo she wants because it's deemed non-essential. Then there was Running with Scissors by Augustine Burroughs. This was a strange memoir about a child who was brought up in a psychiatrist family. Then over two months I read Dombey and Son. This is when I started my booktube channel back in September and it was a bit frustrating because I, each video I hadn't finished a book because I was still reading through Dombey and Son. I love Dombey and Son but it's a weighty tome and it took me two months to finish. Now all the books I'm telling you about are from my booktube era. I started my booktube channel on the 20th of September so I've talked about these books previously on booktube so you're welcome to look at previous videos to see more about them. The first was Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. Emily St. John Mandel's novel is about a pandemic called the Georgian flu which started here in the Republic of Georgia where I live uh, but there's not a lot about Georgia in the story it's mainly about what goes on around the Lake Michigan area in Canada and America and it follows a troupe called the Travelling Symphony 20 years after this post-apocalyptic in this post-apocalyptic world who try to deliver Shakespeare and classical music to the remnants of civilization. Talking of the remnants, the next book I read was The Keening by Margaret Pina, which you might have seen me going on about quite a lot on this channel because I really love this book, The Keening. It's also interesting because Margaret Pina is a booktuber and I found out about this book because of Booktube. It's the story of a group of Highlanders, a family of Highlanders, who are thrown off their land in, on the island of Mull, a land they've been farming for generations because the laird wants to 
keep sheep and make money and they emigrate to Nova Scotia and they have to eke out a living in this new land. In the, sh um, the shortest book on my list is The Life of a Stupid Man. On Goodreads there are shorter books but I don't count them as reading officially. Uh, this is Akutaga Akutagawa. I didn't like this. This was too dark. It was too much about death and about suicide. It wasn't really my cup of tea. Uh, then I read Cry the Beloved Country by Alan Patton about Johannesburg in the 1940s. Then I read the second book of the Remnant series, The Grasping Root about this family of Highlanders as they're settling in Nova Scotia and trying to eke an existence from the land. Then I read Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. This is the first book I've read by Virginia Woolf. I enjoyed it so I hope it won't be the last book. Now we get to this month and this month I've been doing quite a lot of reading. I read The Stone Mattress by Margaret Atwood. This was a series of short stories, nine short stories. The first three are connected, the others are each standalone. And it's about people who are aging, but these aging protagonists aren't going to age gracefully. There's murder in here, there's all sorts of goings on, menage a trois, all sorts of things. It's, it's a very interesting read. Then I read this one, Quiet Until the Thaw, by Alexandra Fuller, about two characters from the Lakota Nation. And now yeah, I'm still processing this because the writer Alexandra Fuller, she's not Native American, and some of her characters come across as rather stereotypical. She did spend three months with the Lakota researching this novel. And it was an interesting read. It was a quick read. It looks bigger than it is. If you look at it, the writing, there's a lot of space and the chapters are very short. And I read Edge Dancer by Brandon Sanderson. Before I came on Booktube I'd never heard of Brandon Sanderson, now I hear it from many corners. Gregory Lepech can tell you a lot more about Edge Dancer than I can. I'll link to his video about it in the description below. And Murder at St. Remy, I, Murder in St. Remy, I read. This was a cosy Christmas read by Susan Kiernan Lewis. It's set in Provence at Christmas time. Uh, it was fun. I got it free on Kindle, so I can't complain. And it was seasonally appropriate. Then I read Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. You can see my video where I attempt to read this in one day. If you've seen it, spoiler alert, I failed. I managed to read two thirds of it. I've finished it now. It's an interesting book, but there are some racist undertones, which I don't really like. I'm hoping by the end of the year to finish two more books. One I already mentioned, Storm Rack and Spin Drift, the last book of the Remnant series. Well, the third book of the Remnant series is currently the last book. I don't know if there'll be more after that. You'll have to ask Margaret Pinard. And finally, wherever it is, <laughs> this one, no logo. I'm on page 108. I hope to finish this by the 31st so I can tell Goodreads I've read 50 books this year. So, those were the books I read in 2020. If you like this video, you can like and subscribe. If you have any comments, comment in the box below. And I will see you on the next video.